Now, how did George Harab go from a, a balladeer with a message to a gentleman releasing three really terrific CDs? George, how did you do that? It's a question of surrounding yourself with unbelievably talented people and sponging off of them as much as possible. <laughs> okay. That's my, that's my, that's my, my advice to anyone. Uh, no, it's, it's, there is a, a gentleman up in Queens, Astoria, Queens, who subsequently has become my best friend. He owns a studio. Right. And he is one of the, one of the kindest, most wonderful people I know, and he very, very nicely uh, uh, provides his studio for me. Uh, to be able to re do recordings like, like these at an unbelievably uh, 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 great rate. Um, so great that it's almost illegal. Um, he helps produce these things, he helps engineer them, and it works out that way. He, he is such an influence on me that I actually wrote a song about him. Because right. he not only is a great, musician, uh, a great uh, engineer, but he's a fantastic musician. He's also blind. So he's one of these people that inspires you to okay. just shut up and not complain about anything. Sure. Because he never complains and he's just a wonder wonderful guy. So after watching a performance of his once, I remember thinking, how does he do that? How do you do that? How, how are you so good at what you do and such a small ego? So I wrote a song called How Do You Do? And that's about Slump. If I can play it, sure. Try it. three CDs yes. that I have that you've released with your friends. Yes. I want to tell you that it's much more than just, although you're a wonderful guitarist and Thank I you. love the lyrics, there's a Chicago sound, there's a little James Taylor in you. Okay, sure. There's Thank you. all kinds of, when I put this in the, the CD player in my car, I'm listening to hip hop, I'm listening to some classical, I'm listening to, I mean, these CDs are not just one genre of music, it's everything. Right. Well, I, I love all kinds of music, and I'm influenced by all kinds, and often I'll hear something and I'll think, oh man, okay, I have to write a song that's kind of in that, in that genre, whether it's country, whether it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, hip-hop, whether it's something like Tower of Power, whether right. it's something uh, uh, like Talking Heads or King Crimson, all these bands that are such an influence on me, I don't want to feel sort of a, a constrained in one genre. So, yeah, to me, I try to make each album, it's almost like a, 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 a mixtape right. that you would make for someone else, you know, of your favorite artists. And uh, the, the latest album, Coelacanth, the newest one, right. I think is a little bit more of a, uh, of a focus of not so much dance-oriented, but uh, groove-oriented. And that right. comes from my work with the Philadelphia Funk Authority. 
uh, which is a, a we specialize in 70s funk music, which right. is just the, the, the most fun music you can play mm -hmm. in terms of party music. Uh, and so I use the horns from the funk band uh, on Sela Camp on the latest record, and it just gives sort of a fun party atmosphere to it. Now, we want to buy some of these CDs. They are really sure. good. Uh, we just had the numbers on the screen. Okay. There, are they also in other record stores? Yes, if you go to uh, Compact Disc Center, Yes. the, the fa fantastic Compact Disc Center, uh, they're available there. Both Vitriol and Coelacanth, the newest ones, are available there. Right. Now that very uh, plain, uh, there it is, okay, right. that it, it, this is, this CD, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I want to tell you, the Thank last you. 20 miles I had to drive before I came in, I had it on, and I just absolutely loved it. In addition to that, George, it's the packaging. Of this is just absolutely amazing, and I know you want to thank Donna for that. Absolutely, Donna, Donna McGovern and I work on these. Uh, Donna from Sherbrooke Studio, yay Sherbrooke! Woo she works on the fabulous design of all these. Yeah. I, I, what's great is I come to to Donna with an idea, and a very obtuse, obscure idea. I say, how can we do X? Right. And she says, we can't do X. And I say, sure we can. We can. How can we do this? And she thinks about it, and she consistently delivers unbelievable product for unbelievable uh, 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 efficiency and, and, and low cost. And, right. You know, a question uh, 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 like the vitriol tin. Yes. Uh, the thing that comes in the this yeah, sort of metal the, box this, there. Right. We found a company in, in uh, I believe it was Indiana, that makes these tins. And they were just slightly more expensive than a regular jewel box. Right. And we thought, all right, let's do it. Let's go for it. I, I as, a, as a music fan, I love when the things that you buy come it's almost like a bonus. It's, right. it's not just the music, but you get this experience of opening the packaging. Right. There's nothing more sort of disturbing to me than when you buy a record and you open it up and there's just a single page in there that just lists, you know, the producer's name. Right. You know, like, because I, I, I love, I mean, I love Minutia so much, I named an album Minutia because right. I just love all those little details. Kind of like Cracker Jack. It, it, exactly. Musical it, Cracker it, Jack. Musical Cracker Jack, yes, and, and, and just as sweet. Oh, George Harab, what a way to finish off. Yes, yeah, so uh, nice spotlight. Oh, no. Thanks for being our guest. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. See you next week on Community Spotlight. Good night. Mm -hmm.